Welcome aboard, everybody. It's Rob from PMDG, back with another tutorial for our Douglas DC-6 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're in the climb. The topic of today is going to be superchargers. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to use the superchargers correctly in order to get the airplane up to higher altitude. Might seem a little intimidating at first, but it's actually pretty easy once you've seen how it's done. So set your crew meal down or drop it off in the galley. Come back and strap in because it's time to get started. So let's talk about what makes these engines run. Yes, there's all kinds of jokes to be made here about paperwork, FAA inspectors, money, Yes, all of those things make these engines run. But what really makes them run? Inside the cylinder, there's a fuel-air mixture. That came in through an intake valve, and that intake valve was fed by an intake tube, and that intake tube was fed off of a manifold, and that manifold was fed a fuel-air mixture that came through the carburetor. And that carburetor's job is to spray fuel into air that's being sucked into the engine. And it creates a nice happy little explosive mixture that also cools really rapidly because the fuel is vaporizing and that means it's also evaporating. So the air going in through that intake cools very rapidly and that makes the air in that intake tube a little more dense than it is on the outside. All of that works to our advantage. As you take that engine and you start going higher and higher in altitude, though, something happens. And that is basically that the air entering into this whole contraption becomes increasingly less dense as we climb to higher altitudes. As that air becomes less dense, the ratio of fuel to air starts to change in favor of fuel and well, the burning properties change, and there's a whole physics lesson we could go into about stoichiometric mixes and efficiency of burning materials and things like that. We have someone on our team who could explain all of that to you, but frankly, when he starts to talk about it, it bores me sometimes too. So, we'll skip over that part. All right. As our engine gets higher in altitude, that air is getting less dense. So, in the 1930s, in a creative effort to try to make engines more capable of carrying airplanes higher, the process of adding a supercharger to the back of the engine became vogue. Most of the radial engine airliners that you've ever heard of had engines that have superchargers. For example, I fly a DC-3, the DC-3 has superchargers, which means that at sea level, we're capable of getting a internal pressure inside the engine is much higher than sea level pressure. So for example, at sea level on a standard day, and I apologize to all of our European friends, I'm going to talk about inches here instead of the metrics, but on a standard day we get about 30 inches of mercury as the pressure measurement. And the theoretical limit for pressure inside the engine would then be about 30 inches. You've probably noticed that in the DC-6, you can get that internal engine pressure up to almost 60 inches if you want to. That's done through a supercharger. So, as you bring the throttle forward, that supercharger spins really, really quickly. It jams a whole lot more air through that intake process than the engine would otherwise be able to pull in. Which means that we get a really dense fuel-air mixture going into that cylinder where, if we're lucky, it meets that happy spark we've been talking about. It goes boom, it pushes that cylinder head all the way down to the bottom of the bore and exhibits wor exerts work on the crankshaft, which of course causes the propeller to go spinny spinny and that generates forward momentum or generates lift going forward and drags the whole airplane along with it. The rest you've probably figured out. So the great thing about the DC-6 is that it has superchargers that can run at more than one speed. This means that as we are climbing, eventually we hit a point where the normal gearing ratio of the supercharger is not sufficient 
to allow us to maintain a good power ratio inside that engine. So we shift the supercharger to a better ratio. It then starts to provide much greater pressure to the inside of the engine, and we're back off to the races. Now I'm oversimplifying this a little bit just to kind of keep it conversational. But when we reach about 16,000 feet in the DC-6, what you're going to notice is that the manifold pressure that you see on your gauge is going to start to fall off below 40 inches. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and level us out at 15,000 feet. And I'm going to freeze the screen for a moment because there's some topics that I kind of want to go through to make sure you've heard them before you see them in operation. So we're going to start out at 15,000, and then we're going to initiate a climb to go up to flight level 190. As we do this climb, we're going to run out of pressure at the low blower setting, which is the normal supercharger setting for these engines. And we're going to have to switch them over to high blower in order to maintain thrust during the climb. So that's what we're going to show you here. In order to do this, there's a couple of things we need to accomplish. If you have the automated flight engineer managing power and you're in cruise, reach over to the tablet, turn the automatic flight engineer off. And the reason why you need to do that is if he's got control of your throttles, he's not going to let you move them. Since you've taken him out of the loop, you are going to manage the throttles and the engines for this portion of the climb. Now, I want you to remember this phrase. M P T. Mixture, props, throttles. That's the order that you're going to move these controls in when you are adding climb power. So if you forget later, which one do I move first? Just remember, put those letters in order. M, P, T. My flight instructor gave me that because he figured out pretty early on that I could never seem to remember this when I was learning to fly. That seemed to work for me. I hope it works for you. All right. First thing you're going to do, you're going to bring the mixtures up to auto rich. That will ensure that the engines get full fuel flow as you're adding power. Then you're going to bring the propellers forward to 2400 RPM. You can see here just a very slow movement up to 2400 RPM. Now you're going to bring the throttles forward until you get 40 inches of manifold pressure. Now you're back in climb power. Reach over, trim the airplane up so you start up in the climb. You really want to climb at about 500 feet per minute when you're climbing at higher altitudes. Now, as we climb, you're going to start to notice something. Your RPMs are going to stay the same, and that's correct. They should. But you're going to start to notice that the manifold pressure begins to fall off from 40 inches. As that happens, just reach over and bump your throttles forward a little bit generally recommend waiting till your flight engineer is chewing on his lunch or otherwise looking at something else. The flight engineers tend not to like it when we pilots touch the throttles, but inch them forward just a little bit at a time, bring that manifold pressure back up to 40. Keep doing that as you climb. You'll find that you lose about an inch per thousand feet or so at this higher altitude. Eventually, though, an interesting phenomena is going to take hold here. You're going to hit the forward stops on the throttle, and you can no longer get back to 40 inches. This is what's known as critical altitude. You have effectively run out of engine pressure that can be provided from the supercharger at its low setting. This is how you know when it's time to switch to the high setting. But wait, 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 don't go reaching for those switches just yet. Let me walk you through it, because you can blow your engines clean off the wing if you don't handle this part correctly. So let's start out by looking at the manifold pressure. You'll notice that since we've been climbing, these have been falling steadily below 40 inches. Right now we're about 37 and a half inches. Before we engage the superchargers, we want to bring the manifold pressure way, way back, because when the supercharger shifts gears, it's going to start producing significantly more pressure. So it's important to bring the manifold pressure back in order to make room for that additional air charge that's going to be coming in. To do that, just 
walk the throttles back really gently and slowly. No need to do it too quickly. These engines like everything to be done very slowly, very gently. Now the rule of thumb here is you can expect about a 12 inch boost in manifold pressure when you turn the blower to soup to the high supercharged setting. So bring your manifold pressure back to either 28 or 10 inches below where you were when you started moving it. Then pick either engines 1 and 4 or engines 2 and 3 and throw those switches up and you'll see all of a sudden now we're right back to 40 inches and 190 plus or minus BMEP in the fuel flows back up around 1100 pounds per engine. Once you see those are stabilized and they're both working, reach back up there, grab the other pair, bring those up, and you'll see the other two engines jump up as well. Now the thing that's interesting here, and this is kind of the cool sciencey part, you'll notice we're back to 40 inches of manifold pressure and the fuel flows are up around 1100 and the BMEP is up a little bit over 190. And if you remember, those are the settings you had down at low altitude at the low blower power setting. Okay, now one important key piece here, don't go messing with the mixtures at this point. You're at a high power setting, leave the mixtures on high. If you bring those mixtures down, you're gonna lower your fuel flow just slightly, but your cylinder head temperatures are gonna skyrocket and now then you're gonna be explaining to the boss why he's buying four new engines already talked about how expensive that can be. So we're now climbing along. Your plane's in high blower. We're seeing 40 inches of manifold pressure, 2400 RPM, and about 190 plus or minus brake mean effective pressure, which really just puts us right in the sweet spot for this airplane to climb. Climbing to 500 feet a minute, we're going through 17,000 now. We've got 2,000 feet to go until we reach cruise and level off. During the climb, you might notice, depending on how high you go, that you start to fall below the 40 inches of manifold pressure. Remember, you're controlling the throttles right now, so just bump them forward a little bit, just slowly get them back to the 40 inches, and continue your climb. If you reach the point where your throttles have hit the forward stops and you can't get any more power, don't panic. That's just all you get. So you probably want to start thinking a little bit about leveling off because at some point you're just going to run out of smash and you're not going to be able to get any higher. We'll cover that a little bit later. But for now, keep running those throttles up to 40 inches. Your plane will continue to climb normally. You'll have no problems. And then when you reach your cruising altitude, go ahead and level off. So the natural question should be, what happens then? Do you leave them in high? Do you switch them back to low? Yeah. Once you go to high blower, leave them there until you've started your descent. Also, to make managing them even easier, when you reach cruise altitude, simply re-delegate power management to your automated flight engineer by pulling up the tablet, pushing the cruise button. He will then go through, reset the engines to cruise power. He's pretty smart. He'll leave the blowers in high for you. But he'll get the power set up for cruise. He'll set an appropriate power setting. He'll set the mixtures to auto lean. You just go back to your captain duty of sitting there making sure everybody's going through the crew rest rotation and getting their jobs done on time. That's all you got to do. When it comes time for descent, push the descent button. Flight engineer, he'll manage the engines for you and start you back downhill. All right, so quick review. 40 inches and 2400 RPM while you're climbing, eventually around 16,000 feet, you'll start to run out of manifold pressure. When that happens, pull the engines back about 12, 10 to 12 inches of manifold pressure, switch two blowers to high at a time, then work the power back to 40 inches, continue your climb. When you reach cruise, delegate to see the automatic flight engineer by hitting the cruise button, go back to sipping your coffee. See? Everybody thinks this whole captain thing is really difficult. All right. That's enough for today. Thanks for flying PMDG. Be well. Fly safely. Look after one another. And we'll talk to you really soon.